Good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in Boston. We're the daily podcast that gets you started on the right foot and always with a positive vibe. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Saturday, February 17th. Welcome to your bonus episode. In this episode, we'll recap all the best news from the week with local news, top sports news, tech and science news, as well as business and entertainment. But first, we'll start with the weather. Here we go. This morning, it's cloudy skies and feels like 21 degrees with five mile per hour wind. The sunset will take place at 5.18 p.m. and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.37 a.m. It looks like we're in for a slight chance of snow after 10 a.m. Then mostly cloudy with a high near 37 and southwest wind six to nine mile per hour in the afternoon. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 20 and wind of eight to 10 mile per hour. The first low tide Saturday will be at 11.30 a.m. with a high tide just before 6 p.m. The nearshore buoy at Cape Cod Bay reads 39 degrees for the water temperature. Looking ahead in the weather, we'll see a chilly, partly sunny Sunday with highs around 36 and brisk southwest wind, cooling to 28 degrees at night. Washington's birthday and Tuesday will be sunny with highs gradually warming to 40 degrees. Nights remain clear with lows in the low to mid 20s. Wednesday turns partly sunny with a slightly warmer high near 43. Now let's check out the local news. In Boston's Back Bay neighborhood, a stunning event called Boston Henge occurs where the sunset aligns perfectly with east-west streets. This year, the best viewing is around Stewart and Beacon streets facing west. The phenomenon, reminiscent of Stonehenge's alignment with solstices, creates a striking orange glow. Local meteorologist Dave Epstein suggests Sunday's sunset at 5.08 p.m. offers the ideal angle with the effect lasting for about 15 minutes. If you missed it, another chance arrives in late October. This natural spectacle also occurs in New York City, known as Manhattan Henge. Mark Wahlberg, renowned for his acting career, is expanding his footprint in the fitness industry by opening two new F45 training studios in the Boston area. The first gym is already welcoming fitness enthusiasts on Summer Street, while the second is slated to open in the North End later this year. Wahlberg, a Boston native, views this venture as an opportunity to positively impact the lives of locals. He's committed to visiting the gyms whenever he's in town, aiming to connect with a community that's close to his heart. In a thrilling beanpot final at TD Garden, Northeastern secured a 4-3 overtime victory against Boston University, marking their fifth title in six years. Bannerwolf Fontaine emerged as the hero, scoring the decisive goal in the last minute of overtime. The Huskies' triumph was fueled by goals from Matt Demolis, Justin Tricoian, and Jack Williams, alongside Fontaine's game winner. Northeastern's goaltender, Cameron Whitehead, was out there standing on his head with 30 saves. Boston University's efforts included goals from Macklin Celebrini, Devin Kaplan, and Lane Hudson, but their goalie, Matthew Karen, faced challenges, allowing four goals. In the consolation match, Boston College achieved a decisive 5-0 win over Harvard. Go Huskies! Soros Fund Management, founded by billionaire George Soros, is set to become the largest shareholder in Odyssey, a bankrupt radio station owner, which includes ownership of WEEI in Boston. Soros' firm holds over $414 million of Odyssey's debt as revealed in a U.S. bankruptcy court filing. The firm's investment comprises $280 million in term loans and $135 million in revolving credit. 
Odyssey, facing a steep decline in radio ad revenue, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier this year. Despite these challenges, an Odyssey spokesperson expressed confidence in the company's future and its ongoing business operations. Odyssey, parent company of WEEI, anticipates emerging from bankruptcy following regulatory approval from the Federal Communications Commission. Boston's financial stability faces a significant threat due to a drop in commercial property values, largely caused by the ongoing popularity of remote work and high interest rates. This situation, described as an economic act of God in a report by the Boston Policy Institute and Tufts University, could lead to a $1.5 billion deficit in commercial property taxes by 2029. With commercial taxes comprising a major part of Boston's revenue, the city must consider difficult solutions, such as raising residential taxes, introducing new taxes, or reducing services to avoid a serious financial crisis. Now on to sports. Manny Machado is intensifying his training following off-season surgery for tennis elbow. Currently in spring training, Machado's primary concern is building arm strength for the upcoming season. Despite a challenging year marked by his first injury list appearance in nine years, at a lower OPS, Machado remains focused and optimistic. The Padres, after missing last season's postseason, have undergone significant changes, including trading Juan Soto to the Yankees and losing key players like Josh Hader and Blake Snell. Machado, alongside Fernando Tatis Jr. and others, is confident in the team's potential, emphasizing the need for collective performance improvement. The Padres are still seeking to strengthen their roster, with general manager A.J. Preller exploring trade options, especially in the outfield. Come along with me and jump in my time machine back to February 15th, 1978. The joke's on you, Leon Spinks said. The man upstairs made it come true. The boxer from St. Louis was speaking to reporters after one of the most stunning sports upsets in history. He just snatched away Muhammad Ali's world heavyweight boxing crown Wednesday night at the Hilton Pavilion. In the capital of gambling, there had been no official odds posted on such a possibility. It would have been tantamount to Poland beating Germany in World War II or to the cost of living receding. Besides divine providence, Spinks had an indomitable spirit, furiously flying fists, and absolute confidence. Muhammad Ali had been a champion for all ages. This was the 20th title defense for the 36-year-old Ali. Think of it, Muhammad Ali, an ex-champion, again. You're still my champion, Spinks said to Ali in the press conference after the nationally televised match. It was a press conference to remember because Ali, the people's choice, instead of sulking because the championship had been lost, Ali magnanimously gave Spinks the credit he deserved. The 24-year-old challenger seemed almost sorry he'd put an old man out to pasture. I'm glad for you because you did what I did, said Ali, referring to his startling upset of then-champion Sonny Liston in 1964. You proved the people all wrong, Ali said. I wasn't robbed, he said of the split decision. He landed some of the best punches I've ever been hit with. Spinks, a refugee from the trouble-infested Prude Igo housing development, had begun boxing when he was 14 years old, just to stop neighborhood bullies from messing over me, he said. But last night, he was on the offense all night long, while Lee seemed content to lie on the ropes for the early rounds, as was his famous rope-a-dope custom. Spinks, who fights as if a red blanket is being waved in his face, piled up points with a relentless assault to Lee's shoulders, head, and kidneys.
After six rounds, Sphinx became world champion after only seven professional bouts to become the fastest heavyweight in history. This article was written in 1978 by the great Hall of Fame baseball writer, Rick Hummel of the Post-Dispatch. <laughs> Caitlin Clark has made history by becoming the all-time leading scorer for Division I women's basketball. In a game against Michigan, Clark scored the record-breaking point early in the first quarter with a long three-pointer, elevating her total to 3,521. This achievement places her third in the all-time NCAA scoring list for both men and women. Beyond her scoring prowess, Clark is also known for her all-around skills, being the first Division I player with over 3,000 points, 900 assists, and 800 rebounds. Her impact extends beyond the court, significantly boosting attendance at games and contributing to the growth of women's basketball. This remarkable feat underscores Clark's exceptional talent and influence in the sport. In top news, in Terp, Sweden, archeologists discovered an ancient stone burial chamber from around 3,500 BC, making it one of Scandinavia's oldest. The site revealed a peculiar finding. All skulls and most large bones were missing from the remains, which is an unusual deviation from typical burial patterns. This absence has baffled researchers who initially thought the site's significance lay in its age and construction. The chamber contained remains from infants to elderly individuals with no signs of violent death. Investigations continue, focusing on DNA analysis to uncover possible causes of death. The researchers suspect ritual practices might explain the missing bones, but the mystery remains unsolved. Recent research reveals a significant overdiagnosis of melanoma in the U.S., raising concerns about the implications of unnecessary cancer diagnoses. Over 80,000 Americans annually are told they have melanoma, a six-fold increase from 40 years ago. However, this rise is attributed more to overdiagnosis than to environmental risks or detection improvements. The study, focusing on white individuals more prone to melanoma, found 65% of white women and 50% of white men are overdiagnosed. The majority of these cases involve stage zero cancers, which are unlikely to cause health problems. Overdiagnosis can lead to unnecessary treatments and long-term psychological impacts. Experts suggest a need for better standards in diagnosing melanoma and caution against routine full-body checks without symptoms. The USDA has announced a nationwide recall of certain charcuterie meats by Fratelli Beretta USA due to potential under-processing and foodborne pathogens. Affected packages are sold under brands like Appleton Farms, Dietz & Watson, and Publix. They have been distributed to stores including Aldi, Costco, and Sam's Club. This follows a previous recall for salmonella contamination. Consumers and businesses are advised to dispose of or return the products. Symptoms of salmonella poisoning may include, but are not limited to, prolonged dehydration, sleeping in an empty bathtub, and death. Let's talk about something healthy today. A recent study reveals Tai Chi, a traditional Chinese martial art, outperforms aerobic exercises in reducing blood pressure for individuals with prehypertension. Prehypertension is a condition where blood pressure is elevated, but not high enough to be classified as hypertension, signaling potential heart disease risk. The study published in JAMA Network Open involved 342 adults with prehypertension, averaging 49 years old. They were divided into two groups, one doing aerobic exercises, like jogging, and the other practicing Tai Chi. Both groups had hour-long sessions four times a week. 
After a year, the Tai Chi group showed greater blood pressure reduction, with 22% achieving normal blood pressure levels, compared to 16% in the aerobic group. Tai Chi, described as meditation in motion, activates the parasympathetic nervous system, promoting relaxation and stress reduction. Besides lowering blood pressure, Tai Chi is also known for enhancing balance, reducing fall risks, and improving mental health among older adults. Regular practice is key in maximizing these health benefits. NIT scientists have made a groundbreaking discovery in the behavior of heat in superfluid quantum gas, observing for the first time the phenomenon known as second sound. Unlike typical materials where heat spreads out, in superfluid quantum gases, heat moves in waves. This was visualized using a novel thermography technique that tracks temperature changes via radio frequencies. This research, important for materials science and astronomy, could shed light on high-temperature superconductors and the physics of neutron stars. The findings offering new insights into the unique properties of superfluids were recently published in the Journal of Science. In business news, this week at TechCrunch Mobility Conference, major updates abound. Uber achieves a full-year profit a first for its operations. In electric vehicles, Ford's secretive low-cost EV project in California and Fisker's woes take center stage. Also, Joby Aviation plans to launch their air taxi services in Dubai by 2026. Finally, the EV landscape sees dynamic movements with arrival, electric delivery vans, facing financial challenges in the UK, and Rydian set to unveil a new, more affordable SUV. In a significant crypto development, Bitcoin surpassed $50,000 for the first time since December 2021, triggering a rally in crypto-related stocks and funds. This surge is partly due to robust demand for new spot Bitcoin ETFs. Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency, has experienced a 13% rise in the past week and an 11% increase this year, building on a 150% gain in 2023. Despite this, it's still about 28% below its peak from November 2021. Leading spot Bitcoin ETS, like Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust, saw gains around 5.6%, while Bitcoin futures like ProShares Bitcoin Strategy also climbed. Shares in Coinbase and MicroStrategy rose significantly, reflecting broader market optimism. Experts attribute the rally to increased spot market demand, and some investors viewing Bitcoin as a safe haven amid global uncertainties. However, its price volatility remains a concern. Future predictions are optimistic, with expectations of Bitcoin reaching up to $160,000 by end of 2024 and potentially $350,000 by mid-2025. Intuitive Machines, a space startup, experienced a perplexing 7% drop in their stock following the SpaceX delay. Originally, the SpaceX launch was set for Tuesday, but they encountered an issue with fueling while the rocket was on the launch pad. The new launch is rescheduled for today. This minor delay in their moon landing mission seems to have disproportionately affected their market value, wiping out over $30 million. The market's short-term reaction to a mere two-day postponement raises questions, especially considering SpaceX's strong track record of successful launches, having conducted nearly 100 in 2023 and 11 this year. While SpaceX, valued at about $175 billion, isn't publicly traded, it's recognized as a leading aerospace and defense entity. The impact of this brief delay on intuitive machine stock highlights the often unpredictable nature of stock market responses. Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic indicates that interest rate cuts, anticipated by investors, may not occur 
until at least the third quarter of 2024. This revised timeline is earlier than his initial forecast, prompted by faster-than-expected inflation slowdown. Bostic anticipates two rate cuts in 2024, but emphasizes caution, prioritizing true signals of inflation decline over volatility. Despite the easing of inflation in January, it remains above expectations, with consumer prices up 3.1% year-over-year. The Fed's main focus is bringing inflation down to its 2% target. Bostic stresses the need for a cautious approach to rate cuts to avoid reigniting inflation and advises against relying on past economic patterns to predict current monetary policy impacts, highlighting the uniqueness of current economic conditions. Moving on to a more local vibe. In our community spotlight on health and wellness, we are working with a national Pilates studio to bring you some free classes, so listen up. Check out Club Pilates with several locations in the Boston area. Pilates presents a comprehensive wellness approach, cultivating strength, reducing tension, and elevating mental well-being. Scientific research affirms its benefits. So now you can check out Club Pilates for a free class with locations in Canton, Wellesley, Hingham, Brookline, and Framingham. Just be sure to tell them Sunny Morning sent you by. And now, back to the show. Let's talk tech. The latest iPhone software update, still in beta testing, introduces a significant update for Apple Cash users. It now allows the generation of a virtual card number, enabling payments even in places where Apple Pay isn't accepted. This feature addresses a major limitation of Apple's payment service, now making it more versatile. Users can easily set up this virtual card through a simple two-step process in the Wallet app. The virtual card includes an expiration date and security code while maintaining a separate number for Apple Pay transactions. This enhancement offers greater convenience, especially since there are still numerous locations that don't support Apple Pay. Additionally, it eliminates the need for transferring money to a bank, which could incur a fee for instant transfers. In a significant move, Google has rebranded its AI offerings under a single name, Gemini. This change sees the previous Bard chatbot and Duet AI features integrated into Google Workspace, all unified as Gemini. Notably, Google has also launched Gemini Ultra 1.0, a more advanced version of its language model. Gemini, blending the roles of an assistant, chatbot, and search engine, is now accessible via dedicated Android app, replacing Google Assistant in some functions. However, there's no iOS app yet. iPhone users can access Gemini through the Google app. Gemini's introduction marks a shift in Google's focus, indicating a strong commitment to AI as it competes with other leading AI developers. For enhanced features, users can subscribe to Gemini Advanced, part of Google's $20 per month Google One AI Premium plan which also includes two terabytes of Google Drive storage. Last night's SpaceX launch could mark a historic moment in U.S. space travel, being the first return to the moon since 1972. Funded privately and crafted by intuitive machines, the mission aims to deliver scientific instruments to the moon's South Pole. This is crucial for SpaceX, and Elon Musk's vision of making humanity multiplanetary with Mars as a key target. Although SpaceX has excelled in satellite deployment and astronaut transportation, planetary travel is a new frontier. The mission success, hinging on today's launch from Florida's Kennedy Space Center, could pave the way for future interplanetary travel. However, risks remain, as highlighted by recent propulsion issues in similar missions. SpaceX has made specific technical adjustments for this launch, acknowledging the challenges, but remaining hopeful for a successful mission. 
A groundbreaking experiment on the International Space Station involves Mira, a compact surgical robot performing a simulated surgery. Weighing just two pounds, Mira is significantly lighter than existing robotic surgery technologies. Developed by Virtual Incision Corporation, it's a product of 20 years of work by Shane Farader and his team. The experiment, funded by a NASA grant to the University of Nebraska, aims to explore the feasibility of remote surgery in space, which could be vital for long missions to the moon or Mars. Interestingly, this technology also holds immense potential for remote areas on Earth, like rural regions or war zones, where access to surgeons is limited. In the U.S. alone, about one-third of counties lack a surgeon, with a projected shortfall of up to 30,000 surgeons in the next decade. Mira's space mission is a step towards realizing the broader vision of remote surgery, potentially revolutionizing medical care in both extraterrestrial and terrestrial settings. Apple's latest tvOS beta code hints at the development of two new HomePod devices with screens, one nearing production. The code reveals a new tvOS device, codenamed Z314, featuring an A15 processor, a significant upgrade from the current HomePod's S7, and Mini's S5 processors. This implies enhanced capabilities beyond audio, likely supporting a display. Previous leaks showed Apple testing tvOS on the iPad Mini, aligning with rumors of a larger display HomePod. The lineup may include a model similar to the current generation and a more versatile one akin to Amazon's Echo Show. Respected analyst Ming-Chi Ku predicts a 7-inch model launch in early 2024, marking a step in Apple's revamped smart home strategy. And in entertainment news, in this year's Super Bowl, country music icon Reba McIntyre was set to sing the national anthem, sparking interest in prop bets on the performance's duration. The over-under was set to 90 and a half seconds. Historically, McIntyre's renditions are notably brief, influenced by her distinctive yodeling style. Yodeling, a vocal technique involving rapid, flexible shifts between chest and head voice, often leads to quicker song interpretations. McIntyre's past anthem times, like 72 seconds in 1974 and 66 seconds in 1985, exemplify this trend. However, as she has matured, her times have slightly lengthened due to a mix of increased vocal control and decreased physical vocal agility. Interestingly, McIntyre's rhythm has been inconsistent in past performances, primarily due to her singing a cappella. This variability might influence her upcoming Super Bowl performance time. In the end, you should have bet the over because Revo went 95 seconds. And if he did go with the over, then winner, winner, chicken dinner. Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, a new documentary by Betsy Schechter, explores the life of disco icon Gloria Gaynor. The film, getting a one-night theatrical release, delves into Gaynor's journey as she transitions from her 70s disco fame to a gospel artist. It reveals her struggles with personal and professional adversity, transforming her hit, I Will Survive, into a broader anthem of empowerment. The documentary also touches on Gaynor's past challenges, including her relationship with ex-husband Linwood Simon and a persistent spinal injury. While focusing on her gospel career and the making of her Grammy-winning album Testimony, the film has been critiqued for its intimate approach, lacking broader industry perspectives. However, it celebrates Gaynor's resilience and musical legacy, underscoring her impact on the disco genre and her personal growth. This summer, Santana and Counting Crows are embarking on the Oneness Tour, a 29-show journey across 28 North American cities. Celebrating the 25th anniversary of Santana's Supernatural album, the tour kicks off in Toronto and concludes with performances in San Diego and Phoenix. 
Carla Santana, a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee and 2013 Kennedy Center honoree, continues to inspire. Fans can buy tickets through various pre-sales and VIP packages, promising a unique concert experience. The tour features notable stops, including Red Rocks Amphitheater and the iconic Footprint Center in Phoenix. Marvel's Fantastic Four is set to hit theaters on July 25th, 2025, with an exciting cast announcement that's sure to delight fans. Pedro Pascal, Vanessa Kirby, Ivan Moss Bakrach, and Joseph Quinn have been officially cast as the iconic superhero team. Pascal steps into the role of Mr. Fantastic, Kirby as the Invisible Woman, Quinn as the Human Torch, and Moss Bakrach as the Thing. The film, directed by Matt Shackman, known for his work on Marvel's One Division, starts filming this summer. This release marks a decade since the 2015 reboot, which faced harsh criticism. The screenplay, penned by Josh Friedman, Jeff Kaplan, and Ian Springer, brings to life the first characters created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby for Marvel Comics. The anticipation is high for this new adaptation, hoping to redeem the Fantastic Four's cinematic legacy. Dune, part two, is receiving high praise in its initial reactions, drawing favorable comparisons to iconic films like The Empire Strikes Back and The Lord of the Rings. Critics are particularly impressed with Zendaya's performance as Chani, which is described as central to the movie. Austin Butler's portrayal of the new antagonist Fade Rotha is also being highlighted as a standout, transformative performance. The film, directed by Denis Villanueva, continues the story of Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides and features a mix of returning and new cast members. The sequel's battle sequences and visual storytelling are being likened to the works of Peter Jackson, George Lucas, and David Lean, suggesting a cinematic experience on par with some of the most celebrated sci-fi and fantasy epics. Dune, part two, is set to release in theaters on March 1st, further expanding the ambitious adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic novel. Well, all righty folks, it's time for the quote of the day. And today, our quote comes from the author, William W. Perky. You've got to dance like there's nobody watching. Love like you'll never be hurt. Sing like there's nobody listening. And live like it's heaven on earth. And that's a wrap for this morning. Have an amazing day, my good friends. Thanks for tuning in.